Digital Music Trends, episode 107, on the 24th of October, 2012. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends, episode 107. This week I'm not actually really here, uh, so we're reverting to Digital Music Trends old format, which is uh, one-to-one interviews, and we have uh, two uh, really great companies that are featuring on the show uh, while I'm on vacation, uh, which are uh, BAM.TV and uh, Daytonia. So we're going to have uh, Nick Hansen and Chris Hansen from BAM.TV and Will Lovegrove from Daytonia, uh, who are going to talk about their companies and uh, what they're all about. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, there's not going to be a show next week, but we're going to be back on the 5th of November, uh, as usual, with uh, the panel and the news coverage. I hope you have a great week, and until next time. Okay, so today it's a great pleasure to welcome on the show Chris Hansen and Nick Hansen, respectively CEO and company director at BAM TV. So hi guys and thanks for joining me on the show. I hope the connection holds out as I'm uh, on a Paris Hotel Wi-Fi and your guys are in San Francisco. So how's it going today? Uh, very well, thanks. Yeah, Going very well. Thanks for making the connection from a hotel room. <laughs> I just hope the Wi-Fi holds out. So, yeah. uh, I mean, first of all, uh, I know that the company has already been around for uh, a year and quite a few of our listeners may have heard of it. But would you mind just running me through uh, where BAM.TV first originated and what, what, what was the initial concept for the company? Sure. So we've actually been recording bands for about three years now uh, in our studio in San Francisco and at festivals and venues in different parts of the world, uh, South by Southwest and in Europe as well. Um, so the business model is we don't charge bands anything to record and we split the net profits 50-50 with the artist. And in yeah. return, we get a global distribution license to the content. So we're really, BAM TV is really a content production and distribution company. Yeah. Uh, and our unique selling point is the fact that when artists work with us, they assign us a global license uh, to what we record. Uh, they retain the ownership of their songs, their copyright and intellectual property. But what we seek to monetize is what we record either in the studio here in the San Francisco headquarters yeah. or on location. Absolutely. And, and there are two main challenges that you address with the company that are the first one is actual costs of production of a high, high definition, high quality music video. And the second one is the challenge of actually once you get that video done is to actually monetize it. So the great thing is that since you guys don't actually charge for uh, the production of the, of the content, then you really have a great incentive into the, the monetization side of things. But, but starting, uh, starting with the production of, of, the, of the content, uh, how do you feel bands, uh, situ like the bands um, feel about the production of this type of high definition content? Uh, do they um, actively seek it out or do you actually have to make them realize how important that kind of content can be for their career? Uh, I think the, the perception is pretty clear with artists uh, that video is the new album art. Yeah. And this is the most attractive rapper that you can put around your music in order to have mass appeal. Yeah. And so when, you know, Napster came along and music was suddenly this compressed MP3 file that you were downloading from some torrent, the whole user experience got lost. And so in our experiences with, with the artists, both in, in terms of ones that are trying to get big gigs, like to go on, you know, late night talk shows and big festivals, I want to see how you can perform live because anybody can sound good in the studio. But then also f for consumers and just getting a fan base and getting people excited about what they're doing, uh, you know, video just is sort of irreplaceable for that. I think the thing, the thing that when we started um, prognosticating if we could form a company that would have a strong music focus, but would be, you know, designed in a way to sidestep all of the problems that, that go along with uh, recording uh, contracts and, 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 and distribution and play out from an analog era to a digital era, what we started to think of was, well, you know, the CD is, for lack of a better phrase, dead. 
I mean, yeah. CD sales are not a growth industry. Um, and so what we started out with was the mentality that don't record a demo, uh, record a video. And we've and that was many years ago now, five years ago. But we've kind of we, we've kind of grown the concept uh, from there as the business has developed. And now we're at the stage where we have um, you know close to seventy hours of finished video content, uh, for about one hundred seventy five, one hundred eighty different artists. Yeah. And, and, and sorry, gone. I was just going to say the other great thing about video is if you start off with broadcast quality HD, there are any number of derivative works you can do, whether it's ringtones, you know, it could be any number of things. But if you don't have, if you don't start with video, you never get it. Absolutely, of course, and and, and the the thing that people have to realize is that it's not just a high quality video; it's just it's also quite high quality recording. So I assume you guys record. Uh, multi tracks from the gig, and then it all gets mixed down. So it's it's a whole process around the audio as well. I'm sure. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's really important to what we do. Uh, we we tend to record uh, the video and the audio uh, on on a on a internet streaming device that's called a TriCaster. It's pretty well known yeah. uh, in the industry these days, um, and, and that's. That means that we have a you know, rough live streaming on, um, to the internet sort of straight away. Um, but what we, what's really important for us, both for the audio and the video, is to go back and make the cuts on the beat so that it has an impact as if it were a scripted studio session. And um, actually, our avatar for our iPad app is also our, our chief audio engineer, and, 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 and we, have a, we have a team uh, of, of really committed professionals that are really blow me away with their knowledge and understanding of just what sounds great. Yeah, the great thing about video in this environment is it's it's this amazing collaboration yeah. between the artists that come in and play their hearts out, but then our video looking at it, trying to take like what the band is projecting, what the stage design is inspiring, and making a final product that is bigger than just a live performance you know, Absolutely. some band. So that's the that's the, the miracle and the beauty of television, I, I suppose. Yeah. And, and the other challenge, so we're talking about the making of the video, and we'll talk about how that works. And the other challenge, of course, is getting people that are outside of the sphere of people that know a lot about music or that would care about uh, new bands uh, to care about this video that is produced and to distribute it and to monetize it properly because that's the second huge challenge that faces uh, artists that are not on a major label or, or, or you know, a large independent. Uh, so how did you go about uh, working on that side and how did you start approaching uh, international partners and, and the U.S. partners for the distribution of video? Well, the, uh, on the production side, the first step of production is curation. Yeah. And because we're investing a lot of time and effort into doing this, we only work with bands that we think are on the cusp of, of doing it. It doesn't matter if they're unknown or if they're relatively well-known. If we think that they're, they have the potential to break through, then we invest you know, the production. Yeah. And that has actually paid uh, big dividends for us because we, we have a pretty good track record of working with bands that have gone on to be validated by other tastemakers. So that's that's great. Um, yeah. In terms of you know how do we get people to care about a band that they haven't heard of, that's where our for our consumer facing side, that's where the iPad app really comes in. It's just a, a fully immersive experience that is intrinsically enjoyable. And when you actually sit down and watch the videos, we hope that you get engrossed in it. Yeah, absolutely. And so let's talk about that. Uh, that's actually, you know, the reason for the interview. You, you guys have this new uh, iPad app coming out, uh, which, uh, you know, looks great. Uh, how, how did you go about conceptualizing the idea of the, of, the, of the app? And of course, it's all based around curation and how can people explore the catalog of BAM.TV? So, I mean, we um, set out and we said, we have to have a really great, uh, intuitive, simple, uh, to the point user interface, and, and we have 
uh, mostly in actually in our in our website in our website which is written in HTML5 we worked with uh, a famous newspaper designer uh, called Mario Garcia and his team that he assembled from people from really uh, all around the world um, really came together to, to, to put this together. Yeah. So we have the website that's already been uh, uh, released and the response to that has been quite warm. It's very direct, it's very, it's, it's, it's very to the point. But what we really wanted to do was for the you know, true believers that really are into music discovery, uh, give them something a little bit more. Um, you know, the iPad is by far the most elegant consumer device probably that's ever been created. I mean, in terms of if you really think about what you can actually do with that little you know, device. Yeah. Um, so what we, what we wanted to do was to, get, to give the user something that rewards not only the ear and the eye with the music and the video, but also the finger. Um, so that you can tap and 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 and, and play around in in this um, uh, real world environment that's inspired by um, you know underground music venues, nightclubs, things like that. It's meant to appeal to the 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 the. Um, well, you always feel happy when when you when you found out about a band first. Yeah. Um, so it's these these are the types of venues where you're gonna where you're gonna make these types of music discoveries. Um, and what we really tried to do was to, was to create a way that if you really want to engage with, with the app, the more you engage with it, the more it's going to reward you by virtue of <clears throat> unlocking uh, special content, you know, for, for under, undergoing uh, the effort. Yeah. Um, mostly, it gives you a direct and, 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 and a very clear pathway to uh, playing our, our music videos. Absolutely. And in terms of the actual... Uh Monetization side, do you have any monetization features within the app? I know that there's a, a, a sketch of a store as well, uh, possibly in the works. So there is ad supported streaming and, and as the primary model there. And yeah. uh, we, we have built the banner ads into the environment of the venue. Yeah. So that they are present and not obtrusive. And then uh, there, there are also you know, pre roll advertising on some of the videos. We're going light on advertising right now because in terms of the full big picture of the business model, um, just relying on that is not, is not a good model. And that's why we have another aspect of the business, which is the B2B side. Yeah. And that's where we uh, give fuller access to our library and direct licenses to mobile carriers, IPTV, uh, even traditional cable companies who... It, Maybe that based on their geography, yeah. they can access major label content, or it may be that they're experiencing increased competition in, say, the mobile space, and they want to have something that's exclusive to their subscribers. Yeah. So these types of deals are actually quite lucrative, and uh, you know they're not reliant upon X number of views or CPMs or or whatever. Of course. We feel like these two uh, sort of sides of the business balance out very nicely because one provides regular recurring revenue while the other is a very exciting a consumer facing product that we can kind of take some risks on and the, and, and the other thing just to, I, I think that's well said and I, I think the, I think the other thing that that I'd like to add is that when we when, we're we're a startup. I mean, we've been I, well. It's, I suppose you wonder how long you're a startup, but I mean, we, we've been doing this for a while. Um, but we we still think of ourselves as a startup. But we're also really trying to create a a um, a dynamic, forward looking, uh, forward thinking brand, so that we can. I mean, Bam TV stands for bricks and mortar media. Um, so the infrastructure that we're building will allow us to, you know, perhaps branch out into, into other content types over time. What we really want to do right now is stay, stay true to what we're finding is, is, is a very uh, um, interesting uh, position in the market to be because of, uh, because of the challenges of licensing major label content and keep, keeping our heads down on that. But we really want to grow this as a consumer brand over time. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, have you found any trouble in terms of, you know, artists maybe being interested in doing this and artists that you wanted to have on, on uh, as, part of, as part of the offering for content, but where there was a label involved and there may have been some friction there? Or uh, would, would at, this, at this level of artists that are still developing the label just be happy that there's somebody willing to pay for the creation of the content? Well, I will say as 
a musician and uh you know a lot of us who started the business together uh were in a band together or we were just deeply involved in in music so there is a background noise of suspicion uh, with anybody that wants to make you sign anything in the music industry and rightly so in our opinion we approach the artists um, largely because we go out to see a lot of live music we really try to be active in the community yeah. our licensing agreement for as robust as it is it's a three page agreement written in 11 point font yeah. and you know you can't there's, there's nothing hidden there the whole business model is based on transparency Transparency. Um, so we do uh, everything we can to put them at ease. Yeah. And in terms of recognizing the opportunity, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter at what level the artist is. There, it, it's self-evident. You know, if if you want to have a wider reach, and somebody's going to create broadcast quality videos and give you a portion of that that you can use for free to promote yourself, if you don't mind licensing your music you know, to some experimental business models, there's really not a downside. Of course. The thing of it is, I mean, the, the, the takeaway for artists is, uh, because to, to answer your question, yes, um, there, are, um, there are conversations that often need to be had. Um, I'm, I'm actually based in London, so I mean, I, I, I manage our, our European side of things, oh, which great. is a which is about you know forty percent of our overall sort of um, uh, number of colleagues and things like that. Yeah. And I did uh, well. The team did, but but I I led up um, um, fifteen bands uh, in five days that we did at a studio in the Netherlands uh, this January. That content's just coming out now, um, and it was very made extremely clear to me uh, with sometimes some very last minute uh, conversations and negotiations. Um, just how new this approach is to uh, recording music. Yeah. But my fallback position is, dear artists, you own your copyright. You own your intellectual property. You own your songs. You have the, you retain the moral rights to, to your own work. All you're doing when you're you know saying you want us to monetize globally uh, your 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 songs is assigning us a license for what we record yep. together and everything else is yours yep. and I think that that was a circumstance that needed to be repeated a few times yeah. and it repeated a few times because we're not a record label we're not trying mm -hmm. to you know do that we're not in that space we yep. think that we, we can keep our focus and actually bring together co broadband delivery uh, uh, providers Artists, consumers, and and um, someone should have switched off his phone before. Right. Sorry, no uh, and uh, wider uh, internet sort of ecosystem. Of course, uh, and okay. So, so let's talk a little bit more about the curation aspect of the and the discovery aspect. How do you get people really involved in the content that you produce in, in a way that it's it's, it's all encompassing? I mean, I think the thing that is really, um, I, I hope, really compelling for for uh, our artists and, and for our users is 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 the whole notion of storytelling. Yep. I mean, in this day and age, um, you know, when 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 music is is very digital, you might not even necessarily know who you're listening to, particularly if it's a mashup or, or a remix or something. Sure. Um, and so what we're really trying to do uh, in the app is when the curtains open and, and the, music, uh, the music videos are playing, um, there are three buttons at the bottom. Um, one is listen, uh, the next is learn, and then the, the final one is engage. So the learn button is our sort of biographical information and external links that we provide uh, sure. for, 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 the, for the user to, to discover more about the band. And on the engage side, um, of course, there's all the sharing uh, and social media aspects that you'd expect. But there's also um, an API call to uh, a company called Thrill Call, which will uh, list all of their upcoming, the band's upcoming gigs, right. and then provide a quick link for um, the possibility to buy tickets uh, straight, uh, straight through the, 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 the app. That's fantastic. And uh, uh, do you have any, any more API sort of integration type stuff that you think you might be interested in doing uh, in the future in terms of allowing people to access some of the content or anything like that? Well, so within 
within the app, uh, we have a gamification layer that's yeah. powered by Badgeville. And, you know, that some people that don't want that experience, and, that, and it's a totally optional path that you can take through the app. Yeah. But uh, as you progress and consume more content, create your custom playlist and share them with your friends on social media, you uh, can unlock different doors and areas within the app where there's premium content waiting behind. Awesome. And uh, the, the ultimate progression of that gamification is if you become an active user and you're really engaged with the app, once we develop sort of a core user base, yeah. you'll be able to vote for Artist of the Month. Yeah. And the Artist of the Month will win a $1,000 cash prize from BAM TV. Right. So for the truly diehard uh, music enthusiasts, uh, this is just a great chance to have something that you do in the virtual world have an effect in the real world. I mean, I, I really would recommend that, uh, you know, any artist that is, uh, I mean, I, I guess, you know, you, you have to be at a certain level in order to be part of the radar and to, uh, to, to, to you know, to be able to, to get into this program. But as you said, the, the artist can be completely unknown as long as the music is fantastic because you actually curate the content and choose what's going to go on it. So, so really, I would encourage any artist listening to the show as well to, uh, to give the site a look. And if it sounds like something that, that they think could be up the street to, to maybe give you a shout if you have a uh, do you have a submissions page yeah you can just email uh, info at bam.tv great and uh, that goes to all the principles uh, and you know links to examples of you know your songs on pretty much any website that's that's what we need to go on. Yeah. yeah, and the same thing goes for any content uh, owners or, or content partners that may be interested in licensing the content. You can get in uh, touch with the BAM.TV at the same email address. Uh, well, I think it, it, you know it's a fantastic idea, and I, I can't wait to see it develop uh, more. And I'm probably gonna try and drop by in London and see and see what you guys are up to as well. <laughs> Great. The door's open, for sure. It's fantastic. Well, uh, again, it's BAM.TV, and the app as well has uh, just come out uh, for uh, iPad. And, uh, uh, yeah, you should really check it out. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so uh, it's great to have uh, today on the show uh, Will Lovegrove, uh, who is the CEO and founder of uh, Daytonia. Uh, so, hi, Will. It's great to have you on the show. How's it going today? Very good, thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Thanks for the invite. That's great. Uh, so, first of all, uh, you know, um, I wanted to touch on your background because I think it's significant in understanding uh, how you ended up uh, launching this uh, this new company. Uh, so, so where do you start from, uh, especially talking about release and and how how that fits into into the picture? Yeah, uh, where to start? Um, so, um, I've been working in the music industry since 1997, um, and I started out um, always on digital, always on the internet, and I worked for companies like the Ministry of Sound, yeah. and a technology startup called People Sound, and then, um, and then I, um, uh, in 2003, I started working for Universal Music Group in their IT department, and in uh, 2008, I created my own consulting company called Release Consulting. Yeah. And um, and uh, a couple of years after starting that, we rebranded ourselves as Release Mobile, and um, we started doing a lot of work with mobile applications. And we still work quite a lot in uh, um, the music industry. We've got a very um, long-standing and positive relationship with Universal Music Group uh, and and Sony Music, in fact. Um, so we do a we do a mixture of things. Um, we do back-end um, enterprise system development. Um, for major record labels, and yep. we also do mobile app development for um, typically media and entertainment companies. Absolutely. And then, uh, and then uh, Daytonia is um, um, our, our product that we have created that um, that really uh, acts like a content management system for uh, mobile apps. Yeah. You no, know, it's a it, on a technical level. I, I describe it slightly differently. It's um, an API creation platform. 
yeah. that um, that makes uh, data APIs from Excel sheets and Dropbox. Yeah. But uh, in terms of a pra practical application, yeah. um, it's a it's a multi-platform mobile app content management system. That's great. And uh, you know, the key part of building a su successful startup, people always say, is to solve a, a real problem that people are having. And the real problem in this case is that a lot of companies uh, see the value and benefit in having some of their internal data available to developers uh, to play around with, especially you know, in the music industry. Uh, from that standpoint, you know, a lot of people are interested in music hack days and what's going on out there and how to make data available to developers. Uh, but very few know how to set one up. So that's where you come in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's exactly right. You know, the situation that we found ourselves in continually was um, when we went to speak to people about mobile apps, they, they, they give us their vision for the mobile app, and it always involved updating the app with content. Um, but if that organization didn't have an API, then uh, that made content updates um, uh, inside the app quite difficult. Yeah. Um, the problem got worse if they had um, apps on multiple platforms, like web apps, um, iOS, or Android. Yeah. And they wanted to do those content updates simultaneously. And, and really, you need a, an API. But the, the issue is, is that uh, APIs are um, complex, technical, um, difficult to set up. You need IT resources. You need money. You need time. And suddenly, um, what turned, uh, you know, a conversation about a mobile app turned into a conversation about IT integration, and, and that's a very, very different type of conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So, we, so we we set out to solve those problems and do it. Um, you know, make an API creation platform uh, fast, uh, you know, fast to set up, easy to set up, um, and cheap. You know, that was a real driver as well. And uh, and we we did that by um, by linking together Excel and Dropbox, um, uh, you know, and our own um, cloud cloud application called Daytonia. That's great. Uh, this it sounds because well. because of course you're making use of two two tools that are very very much you know easy to use and, and people are used to using them. And then if you integrate that with your own backend and and make it work so that it works as an API, that that's probably the an amazing way forward for companies that don't have, you know, a lot of IT resources available and can just say, we're going to up upgrade the Excel, drop it on Dropbox, and that's that's that. Nothing so, else to do. Yeah, you got it. And it was very, very deliberate to use Dropbox and Excel. Um, yeah. You got it. You know, it, it, Dropbox has got something like 50 million companies, uh, 50 million users worldwide. So many of those are in small to medium organizations. Excel is just prevalent everywhere. Yeah. These are tools that people know how to use. It's, it's easy stuff. Yeah. Um, and that was um, that was such an that was such a big uh, thing for us to make it as easy as possible to make something complex like an API. Yeah. And and uh, one thing that's um, of course a, a challenge, but uh, I guess with the flexibility of Excel and, and probably the backend that you have is, is not as much of a problem. Is the fact that all the uh, real-world use cases that you might have for deploying APIs uh, will have a very, very different sets of data that are going to be required to be pushed out. Uh, it, it, was that a challenge for you in terms of how, how the data is presented and, and how you set things up at the beginning so that it works for the company that is, is using the service? We sidestep that problem, um, and it's not a problem for us because um, because we take data from Excel, we just treat the Excel um, spreadsheet as a two-dimensional array of data. It doesn't matter what it contains. It can contain anything, product catalog, um, track listings, metadata. It, it's just uh, it's not important. The API that we create that accesses that two-dimensional array is, is um, agnostic of the contents of the data. Yeah. Uh, we just talk about getting the data set, exporting it, looking at delta functions. So you can literally put anything you want into um, Excel, and, and therefore you can create an API containing anything you want. It can be used for, and we have one client right now, um, which is a cookery school, using it to um, uh, update recipes inside their mobile apps. Wow, that's great. Uh, you know, we've got, we're working with Music Ally as well on um, some data sets uh, that um, are being fed through to the website and also some of their other customers. Um, and we're, we're working with peers, you yeah. know, and uh, are asking their labels to use it to uh, type in tour dates, you know. So it's it's very very flexible and powerful Absolutely. in enabling technology. That uh, it doesn't matter about the structure of the data itself. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so, so uh, how are you seeing the company expand in terms of uh, acquiring your business? Do you are you hoping on word of mouth, or do you have a more uh, sort of outline plan on, on trying to get the word out? Because of course, it's a fairly technical thing that people might not realize they need until they come up to the wall of needing it. Uh, but I think a lot of companies will benefit from having it anyway, just just as something that they can share share with the, with the developer community. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, you've got it. I mean, right now, selling API technology to small and medium enterprises is a tough sell, you know, because most of them um, don't know how to use that kind of technology. They don't know what kind of problems it will solve. So you're, you're trying to sell something to them that they don't know that they need. Yeah. Um, the, probably right now in the short term or the midterm, the smart thing for us to do is to partner with organizations. Yeah. So we're having conversations right now with um, mobile app development platforms, you know, the sort of... Um, All uh, already or... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Guys like that who, um, you know, where you can create mobile apps, you know, inside the browser, but they need to be connected to a data source. Yeah. Um, we're having conversations with organizations like you provide back-end mobile server solutions, you know, people like um, StackMob and Pass, because they have, um, they provide developers with very, very sophisticated um, tools and environments. Yeah. But again, what we found that we're good at is helping extract data from client organizations, non-technical guys, in a very structured, uh, machine-readable way. So we're, we're not competing with those guys. We're entirely compatible with them. We're, we're helping to connect data from their clients' organizations through to mobile apps. Yeah, absolutely. And if anything, it makes the mobile apps more... Uh, have have a longer lifespan. The fact that people can actually update the information on there, as opposed to just having an app that is out there and it's just static, and people don't see any any benefit from. So, oh, totally. You know, I, and it's it's still slightly frustrating to me. You know, on on my iPhone, um, I periodically get um, app updates from um, uh, you know organizations, and and literally all it says in the update notes is um, new content, and yeah. it's like crazy you should get an api you know that app should be connected through to an api you know this is uh you know it's uh, um, it's 2012 for god's sake yeah absolutely and so the, the last point i wanted to talk about was uh, the linkedin uh, built-in thing that's a really interesting thing that i read on the, on the press release so you've got some way of finding uh, uh, like for, for a discover discoverability argument uh, allowing people to find people that are actually interested in potentially interested in their api right yeah so so um, we've been um, we've been working with a lot of companies throughout the the design of this product right yeah. from the start. Um, and what we realized about APIs is that um, small organizations, in particular, need an API to solve one problem. But the thing about APIs is they become more and more valuable to an organization if they solve more than one problem. Or, or put it another way. Um, an API is valuable when one organization or one developer integrates into it. Yeah. It becomes twice as valuable when another developer integrates into it. So we recognize that in order to increase the value of, of our proposition um, uh, to our customers, we were all about trying to help them find um, uh, developers. Um, yeah. So what we did, we actually built uh, integrated into LinkedIn's API, and we built a custom search engine inside the Antonio that uh, to, um that can help our customers find developers. Absolutely. Uh, specifically. Great. Okay, so last point uh, for, for the interview uh, would be like, how can a company get in touch with you guys? And do you have any way for them to try out the service before before they actually start on it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, Daytonia is available now at daytonia.com. Um, it's uh, free to use for three months. Uh, you can sign up straight away. It's entirely self-service. All you need is a Dropbox account. You can create an API in literally minutes. Um, and you know, on the website, there's even a demonstration video of me doing that in two Great. and a half minutes or something like that. So awesome. it's really easy to use. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, and uh, I look forward to see what people are going to create with Dotonia. <laughs> thanks very much for the invitation. I appreciate it. Great. Music.